Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Chris speaking, your extra tall flight reviewer with the strong Swiss German accent. I have just arrived in Abu Dhabi this morning and thanks to the Etihad program Stopover on Us, I may enjoy a free night in the Premier Inn at Abu Dhabi Airport. Of course, this is a nice treat, however, Etihad advertised free stopover hotels such as the Ramada Abu Dhabi Downtown, Traders Hotel or Trip by Windham for business class travelers. But at the time of booking, six months before my flight, only the Premier Inn Airport Hotel was available. I was checking multiple other dates, but there was only again the Premier Inn or none at all. So this stopover on us program is certainly not a selling point for me. Nevertheless, it was good to have a room for my 40 hours layover and I took the chance to check out the desert that evening. Feel free to fast forward a few seconds if you want to go straight to my flight experience. I'm having a last glance at one of the quite many IL-76s going in and out of Abu Dhabi. And then it's time to fly to Bangkok tonight. Abu Dhabi International Airport has a separate entrance for each business class and first class with its own dedicated check-in area. If you like to see the first class experience I had a few years ago, check out my video after this one. I went straight to the business class lounge, which was almost empty. Yet. In a matter of less than an hour, it filled up to the last seat, so I was lucky I could still get some footage before the pile up. Funnily, the board said go to gate, but no gate number was given. Well, that's my kind of humor. Eventually, the gate was shown and I got my first glimpse of my first ever Airbus A350-1000 series, which was still missing in my logbook. The gate area is separated between business and economy and soon it was time to board my flight. Hello A350-1000! I received a warm welcome and the calming mood lighting was also warm and pleasant. This is my spot for the night. This Collins Aerospace Super Diamond seat with sliding doors for extra privacy. I love this lamp and the pattern of shades it creates. Even better if I move away the amenity kit. I was offered a welcome drink and I went for the champagne to kick off my journey with Etihad. On my seat I found this pillow by Armani. 
and the seat topper for additional comfort later at night, which was surely needed, as the seat itself wasn't nearly as comfortable as I hoped for. And there's also this thick blanket, also for later. A hot hand towel was handed out, another little treat I love and expect when flying a good business class. I was trying to figure out how to close the door, but I believe it was locked in position while still on the ground. I will try again later when in flight. There's a little storage room and the safety card. The table can be released super easily from underneath the big entertainment screen. And I believe this is a wireless charging port. This storage space contains the noise cancelling headphones of unknown brand, the IFE remote control and multiple power outlets. I like the remote control being tucked away there, so no accidental elbow triggers are expected. And there's another small, shallow compartment. Every possible space is used smartly. The reading light can be found behind there. The left armrest can be moved up and down, probably for more space when in lie flat position. And there's a little coat hook. Let's have a look at the amenity kit before the lights are being dimmed. The pouch is branded with Aqua di Parma. And it contains two sanitary wipes. A pack of socks and eye mask. Aqua di Parma hand cream and a disinfecting gel. Toothbrush kit and a sample of Aqua di Parma Cologne. I would say it's a decent set. Thank you, Etihad. This Etihad A350 business class cabin is arranged in a generous 1 to 1 configuration, so nobody has to step over his neighbor to leave the seat. There's no individual air fan, only lights. The seat position can be controlled with this little touchscreen on my right. A menu and wine list has been handed out. Feel free to pause and read if you like. It's time to buckle up and I'm looking forward to experience the Etihad business class. While the service is already very promising, I can't say that about the seat. It feels cramped, almost claustrophobic and there is quite limited seat padding. It feels like I'm almost sitting on the frames. I thought there might be a firmness setting option, but I couldn't see any. exits on this area. You'll find instructions on how to open the exit on each exit door. If you are required to evacuate the aircraft, leave all of them. They are the most important ones, so we will not be able to get rid of the equipment that the equipment is related to this area. I just found another little storage space, which comes with a bottle of water. Nice. We are on our way for our on-time departure out of Abu Dhabi. It's nice to see the Etihad A380 active again. I have really good memories of my flight with it. And off we go, my first ever A350-1000 flight. And we will take off just past the new Abu Dhabi terminal a few weeks before its opening.
we are airborne. Time to get rid of my shoes and to check out the IFE. The options are grand and so is the movie selection. I think you get the picture of the selection Etihad offers. For now, I decided to stick to my always favorite channel, the flight map. Soon dinner will be served, so let's move the seat into the lounge position. The dinner is announced with a bellini, plus some warm nuts. Afterwards, my choice of starter, Arabian Messe, was served. Next, I got my requested beef with potato, beans, tomato, topped with a Dijon sauce. The dessert I skipped as I was way too full and way too tired, to be honest. A quick visit to the small bathroom in the very front, which is equipped with a few amenities and overall pretty clean. Back at my seat, I put on the topper and settle in for the night. The flight attendant released my sliding door for additional privacy. It's not exactly protecting me from the views of bypassers, but definitely from my seat neighbors around me. I will try to get a few hours of sleep on this 7 hour flight. So good night and see you in the morning. Good morning and the new day has arrived and we are already approaching the coast of Myanmar. I wish I could say I slept better than expected, but that's not the case unfortunately. The seat is uncomfortable and felt cramped in every direction. I'm not sure if this is the same hard product as TAP Portugal has in the A330neo, but it certainly feels the same. Literally seconds after I got up, I was asked if I would like to have a cup of coffee. Nice! What a nice way to start the new day. We have less than one hour before landing in Bangkok, so I decided to use the remaining time to catch up with my analog travel blog. It's time to get ready for our arrival, so let's put our stuff away, buckle up and move the seat into the upright position. Bangkok, here I come!
Despite the number of flaws I experienced with Etihad, mainly regarding the lack of online options when trying to manage the booking, such as the basic thing like editing the frequent flyer number, the disappointing stopover program, the lack of business class seat comfort and the packed lounge, the aircraft interior design and food was really nice. But it's especially the Etihad cabin crew that did an amazing job and compensated very well for the other shortcomings. Would I fly Etihad business class again? I would say yes, but not without checking offers from the other Middle Eastern carriers too. 7 out of 10 points from my end. I hope you liked this flight review and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and leaving me a thumbs up. That would be wonderful. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye for now.